Hello friends, I welcome you all in my channel True Facts Teaching. My today's topic of discussion is Symptoms of Homeopathic Medicine Echo Night Part 2. First of all, I request you to please share and subscribe my channel for getting my informative True Facts videos uninterrupted. Symptoms of Homeopathic Medicine Echo Night Part 2. Stomach Symptoms The pain are dreadful. Burning pains in the stomach, burning pains, tearing pains, with anxiety, with restless, with fever, coming on, coming on from taking cold, not for overeating, but from taking cold, which has settled in the stomach, from exposure to an ice bath or in a very hot summer from intense heat associated with an irritable brain and vigorous children, vomiting and retching, tearing, as it were, the very inside out by the awful retching, the vomiting of blood, right red blood, right red blood, it is important. This is descriptive of the general stomach trouble. During the febrile state of a state, during the febrile state, he craves bitter things, wine and beer and brandy, but they will come up as soon as they reach their stomach. He craves pungent things, nothing tastes bitter enough. If he could only get something bitter and yet his food tastes, and yet his food tastes bitter, everything he eats tastes bitter, everything he eats tastes just like bitter, everything except water. In the word in the rest in the clinical word it is a gastric catara it is just like a gastric catara it is a very sharp acute inflammation of the stomach leaching vomiting vomiting of bile vomiting of blood ineffectual urging to vomit when there is nothing in the stomach with it, with it where it will anxiety restlessness fear of death important fear of death the fear depicted upon the countenance makes an awful expression. Econite is a useful medicine in inflammation of the liver. Econite is a useful medicine in the inflammation of the liver when it comes suddenly. It is not very useful in repeated attacks, but in the first attack. It is not very useful in repeated attacks, but it is in the, in, in the first attack. Violent inflammation of the liver with violent tearing pains and much burning. Then comes the restlessness, the awful torture of anxiety, moving constantly fear of death, red face, glassy eyes and great thirst. Anxious restlessness covers nearly all of these things. In the abdomen there are shooting pains, burning, stinging pains, after exposure to cold, becoming chilled. We will soon come to think that it doesn't take, it doesn't make much difference where the disorder occurs. We must have the equine patient. We also have inflammatory troubles of all the viscera of the abdomen. It, it may be violent cattle inflammation. It may be a cattle condition of the lower portion of the colon or a cattle condition of the rectum when we will have a dysentery. In dysentery, that which is found in the commode is almost pure blood, blood and a little slime. It seems impossible for him to leave the commode, vomiting a little blood and passing bloody mucus from the rectum. Always they will predict they will die tonight or in a few hours. They look as if they realize the sensation of death. The whole body is in the sheet of anguish, but the ten but the tennis men and the class, the urging to, to stool are simply terrible. It has very, it, is a, it, it has a watery diarrhea, but that is not very important symptoms, although it is doubly marked in hearing. But when your pure blood is passed and mucus with tennis men, the mucus with tennis men, or when little, little green mucus is passed by infants with summer travels, pure blood or grass, grass green discharges 
with fever coming on suddenly in bright rosy little ones think of aconite most of the bowel on inflammation of the liver from the heat and the stool becomes white like milk of, of a particular consistency the child becomes yellow and scrams with pain the child becomes yellow and scrams with pain it is useful in urinary troubles bladder and kidney troubles inflammatory in conditions and with bloody urine scanty urine suppressed urine or retained urine Retention from shock. This retention from shock makes it one of our best remedies for retention in the newborn. The infant just born into the world has undergone to a shock. As as it, uh, at your uh, next visit, the, the nurse says the child has not passed even. The functions of that little one are not yet established because of the grief shock the little one has gone through. Inflammation of the bladder with cutting, tearing pain. burning pain with burning urine burning pains with burning urines retention from cold especially in children with crying and restlessness with inflammatory conditions of the bladder either in the adults or the infants there will be all the mental state representing the aconite patients aconite cures most violent cases of of orchitis which comes on suddenly which comes suddenly it is important orchids orchitis from cold from being chilled in plethoric mean but in the common orchitis from suppressed gonadal discharges aconite is useless aconite is useless in this case the woman in a natural aconite patient with her sympathetic natural sensitiveness she usually takes on complaints from nervous shock from fear and she naturally takes on complaints from from causes other than those from which mean takes on sickness it is very seldom that fears will give a man inflammation but fear is a common cause of inflammation of the uterus and of the ovaries in plethoric vigorous excitable excitable woman fear will often fear will often cause abortion but when aconite is given early enough it will check the abortion that comes from fear fear it is important fear will often cause abortion but when aconite is given early enough it will check the abortion that comes from fear aconite check the abortion that comes from fear we will have the stretching burning tearing pains of aconite sometimes sometimes following fear or sudden emotion sometimes a pregnant woman will say doctor there is no use of planning for my confinement i know i am going to die in this confinement if there is any one thing that is really strong symptoms to prescribe you on it that a dose of aconite and then change the subject she goes away and in a few days he was her about that fear and she says oh never mind that many little things like that can be signaled out but that that state of fear is a very peculiar thing and really represents the whole nature and the being of woman she predicts the day of her death it is important the reason that aconite is an is so often the infant remedy is is because the infant is so often made sick from the fright inflammation of the genitals in plethoric women aconite is more frequently indicated in women and children than in men sensitive vigorous excitable women it is indicated in men in the inflammatory conditions from become chill in dry cold air and it is wonderful how we can convince a patient who need aconite what wonderful things they are in homeopathy by showing uh, by showing him how rapidly with aconite you can put him a uh, sweat and break and break up a sharp fever then that is a decent and single attack after tedious and difficult parturition violent after pains shooting tears after pains with febrile conditions you try in hamlets you try in hamlets with bright red blood and fear of death it is wonderful what aconite will do in some cases arising from taking cold in the in the street that is that you do not mix up with period with fever this fever is a simple form non septic perhaps the breast is involved with shortness in the breast 
suppression of the milk and febrile condition. But if there is a suppression of the lochia, do not give a conite. Newborn children with the difficulty in breathing after the use of forceps or from a tedious labor, the child is breathless. There is difficult after the heart, after the heart, and in a few hours, a fever, fever comes on. Econite is a very simple remedy. The retention of urine in the infant is so commonly on econite conditions that you will hardly ever need to use any other medicine. The little one cannot yet talk. It cannot manifest very much and it, to a certain extent the practitioner is compelled to be somewhat, somewhat routine, of, uh, routine in, the, in, in these affairs. And the routine practitioners have been more, more, have been more in the successful with econite for the retention of the urine. Again, it is true that in many cases of retention of urine in the mother, it will disappear after a dose of causticum. Econite is a great routine group remedy, one that is misused, but it is indicated in all the, all those cases of group which comes on suddenly, a plethoric children from exposure to dry, cold wind, having been out in the, having been out in the cold wind and the mother during the day. The child put it, the child the child is put to bed at, and rises up from the first sleep, uh, perhaps at 9 or 10 or 11 o'clock, grasped and thought cuffs, violently a croupy choking cough with horse bark. Hardly any other remedy or uh, hard, hardly any other remedy can correspond to that uh, rapidity of detection, taking cold in the daytime and developing itself so suddenly. Croup that comes on, on from exposure today and does not develop until tomorrow, morning or the tomorrow evening, may uh, correspond to quite a number of other uh, remedies, but especially hyper, which is slower in the place, in the place. And, and it is more suitable in children somewhat, run down and subject to frequent attacks of croup. Espongia is also similar. It is important. Espongia is also similar, but it lacks many of the elements more likely to occur uh, in run down children. Those are always taking cold. It would be a difficult matter to distinguish between the appearance of the econite and the espongia, espongia croup, so far as the croup is concerned. Because both have all the anxious appearance group in uh, foreign groups. The econite croup is a violent group. The econite croup is a violent group, inflammation of the larynx, and at the same time, a spasm of the larynx coming on with the great rapidity. The spongia group is also inflammatory. The inflammation grows with the spasm. But while spongia may lose up to 11 o'clock at night, suffocating and shocking and choking, it has not the intense febrile excitement that belongs to econite, nor the anguish, although it has all the dryness that that is found in econite. Econite conditions are dry. Econite conditions are dry as a usual thing, or there is only a little watery discharge. Espongia is entirely dry. Espongia is entirely dry. If there is an inflamed mucous membrane, it is dry. We have in the, in the group symptoms in econite, learning sensitive to touch. Group waking in the first sleep after exposure to dry cold winds. Econite is full of disturbances of respiration, dyspnea uh, from the contraction of the small uh, bronchial tubes, which we find the resembles asthma. It is indicated in the, the, the dyspnea that belongs to capillary bronchitis, in that dyspnea that belongs to cardiac excitement in plethoric portions. From taking cold, we can expose the from shock. Dyspnea from fear, such as occurs in the nervous woman, excitable, or uh, easily affected nervous uh, plethoric um, women, breathing short, labored, anxious, quick. It is, it is an asthmatic dyspnea that there is usually dryness of the mucous membranes of the small bronchial tubes. Seeds up a street and can hardly breathe. Seeds up a street and can hardly breathe. Econite has such a sudden violent cardiac irritation, pulse fluttering, weak, full and bonding, seeds up in bed, grasp and throats, wants everything thrown off before midnight, a hot skin, great thirst, great fear, everything is associated together. Anguish and, and dyspnea. Short an attack of pain in the heart with the dyspnea. All go together. Great suffocation. 
great suffocation from the uh, from this fear uh, and from anxiety he, he breaks out in a profuse sweat he is drenched with sweat and yet he just kills his heart when the, when this anxiety passes off he becomes hot so there is a heat and sweat with his awful anxiety pulse like a thread better during expiration the spark of the larynx often comes on during inspiration worse during inspiration constant short dry cough difficult breathing they breathe only with the diaphragm chest troubles such as pneumonia a current produces a very rapid inflammation of the vessel of the chest or the plethora of the lung of the lungs or the plethora of the lungs the mucus membranes lining the air passes the air passes in pneumonia we have this with the dyspnea the suddenness which which come which which comes on it is spreads rapidly that it may go into pneumonia inflammation runs so high that the mucus membranes which is blood cherry red cherry red blood or the mucus that comes up in the white and heavily streaked with bright red blood remember it is bright red blood you go to bedside in bronco pneumonia and you will find in the man mucus is streaked with bright red blood now take the violence which which with which uh, that comes on the restlessness and anxiety of the individual the the predi- he predicts uh, the hour of his death that would be the case with the acquired patient in the case of pneumonia where the lung is involved it is likely to be the upper half of the lung of the left lung uh, when acquired is indicated sometimes the whole mucous membranes the visible throat the larynx trachea the bronchial tubes uh, will be oozed blood sometimes uh, mouthful of blood sometimes mouthful of blood so violent in the inflammation in the in this chest troubles there is much pain shooting burning tearing pains and the patient is compelled to lie in a somewhat elevated position on the back cannot lie upon the either side but upon the neck lying on the side increases the pain the dry cold winds sudden shocks in persons of good strong vigorous circulation the hematite that is spoken the hematitis the hematitis that is spoken of you know it not such occurs in thysis but involuntarily involuntarily the, the blood comes up with a slight cough someone might be deceived to give give it in such cases in in a broken down consistency in a sickly patients but it is not not to be the administer administered in such cases we have much better remedies the passage does not always becomes a pneumonia patient but inflammation of the small ear passes may be all that is present dry cough dry cough vomiting and retching intense fever splitting of blood no expect no expectations except a little watery mucus in the blood it occurs a good deal in the way dry cough sensation of dryness of the whole chest sensation of dryness in the larynx and throat pour down great quantities of cold water and once in a while after a violent coughing spell he puts up little blood but the expectation is generally mucus pneumonia is generally attended with that with the export exportation looking at mm-hmm. like iron rust just like iron rust as it from as it iron rust had been mixed in with it such medicines as brandy and rusters and a few others that ex- that exportation as a common feature as in through the remedies in themselves but econite is a cherry red bright red expectations in hamlets the bright red and sometimes copious all these coughs in pneumonia all these coughs in pneumonia in in group and chest troubles comes on suddenly and if the i goes to sleep he will have a spark in the larynx with dryness of the larynx with dryness of the larynx he goes to sleep in the larynx because uh, he goes to sleep and the larynx becomes dry and he wakes up and grasps the larynx he thinks he is going to choke all this comes on from cold winds vigorous persons get into the draft and and get a chill that will bring in acquired symptoms acquired has in the inflamed parts a sensation as if had if hot steams were rushing into the parts 
as if warm blood we are rushing into the parts, flushes of heat in the parts. I also nerves, I long nerves, a sensation of heat, a sensation of cold. The pulse is the highest form in the fever, in the, in the full and bonding, a strong, vigorous pulse. When the attack is, is first coming, on from the, that is the nerve tensions are present, the pulse is very small, but after the heart sections, it will establish it, then the pulse becomes stronger, tearing pains down the spine. Painful, a stiff neck, crawling in the spine, like insects. That is peculiar features. This crawling sensation, it comes from cold, from being suddenly chilled. Trembling of the hands is sort of with those sudden acute attacks. Creeping pains in the fingers is associated with the sudden acute inflammatory attacks. Cold as ice, feet cold as ice, hot palms, hot hands and cold feet are sometimes present. Rheumatic conditions of the joints, those that comes as the first attack. Not, not only rheumatic and gouty attacks, but those that comes on a acute rheumatism, those that comes in on from shallow exposure to cold from the long rides in a dry cold wheat. They also attended with fever, anxious restlessness with a critical state of mind so often described, trembling, tingling, convulsion of the muscles. But the nerves are full of accurate symptoms and accurate sufferings. Accurate is a wonderful remedy for, for neuritis in the portion. Numbness along the course of the nerves from cold from exposure. Numbness and tingling along the course of the nerves, especially those, those that run close to the surface, inflammatory of the nerve sheet, nervous excitability, excessive restlessness. Sulfur has a strong relation to aconite. It, it has many acquired symptoms. Sulfur has many aconite symptoms. In, in many of the older chronic cases, where sulfur would be used in a strong, vigorous constitution, aconite will be suitable for a sudden attack and sulfur for the chronic. In sudden attacks that aconite conforms to, that is the whole attack, there, will, there may be left in that constitution, a tendency to return of a similar attack. In a sudden attack that aconite con, uh, conforms to, that is the whole attack, there may be left in that constitution a tendency to return of a similar attack. Aconite has no power over the tendency, but sulfur has. Aconite has no power over that tendency, but sulfur has. Of course, most of the symptoms are most agree, but it will seem to you frequently where aconite has been suitable in the acute disease that sulfur symptoms will follow. And many of the times a very violent attack leaves a weakness in the constitution which aconite has no power to contend with. It has no power to keep off recurrent attacks. It has no power to keep off recurrent attacks. It doesn't that, that it's capable of doing that is the end of it. But it, but it is not so with sulfur. After aconite follow with arnica and melodona. Aconite follow well with arnica and melodona. Sometimes it is true, it will appear to you that aconite is capable of coping with all there is in the disease. But there seems to be the lingering something that holds on and such a bad sense as Arnica and Belladonna and Ipica and Brania do have to come in the finish up, finish up to attack or sometimes sulfur, very commonly silicia, very important, very commonly silicia. So we have to study the relations of medicines. If you have administered aconite in too many doses or, if, or given it too strong and your patient is slow in recovering from the attack, or your patient has taken aconite himself unwisely, then coffee or nuts will often put the patient into a better condition. It is important. Please note, if you have administered aconite in too many doses or given it too strong and young in your patient, and your patient is slow in recovering from the attack, your patient is slow in recovering from the attack, or your patient has taken aconite himself unwisely, then coffee or nuts will often put the patients into a better condition. In my next video, I will reveal some true facts of other more important topics. Thanks.